I'm Matthew Amrody Waller. I work for BBC News virtually entirely, but I also work for the Crime Watch programme on BBC One. Oh, great. It's nice to meet you. I'm looking for some kind of careers advice. I have an interest in journalism and keep up with current affairs, but as you just said, you are looking into presenting Crime Watch, or you are about to do it. How did you get started and what advice could you give me to get into the TV industry? I really came into news and to journalism in a really roundabout way. When I left university, I did all manner of jobs. I was an accountant for a year. I sold double glazing for about a year in London, just door to door. And I then was unemployed for about 15 months. Whilst I then, I'd done a politics degree way back at university. It took me a long, long while. I knew I had to stop, uh, and so that's why I sort of stopped after the double glazing to try to work out what to do. And it's actually quite difficult sometimes. You know, so many people I know have broadly done what they always thought they wanted to do. There are a lot of people there who sort of have no idea. Yeah. And uh, I remember the only people that came to speak to us at school were people from the army. Endlessly, we'd get visits from the army. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. um, I had no real idea because of that quite what was out there and so it really took me a long long while to sort of get it straight in my mind that you know with an interest in politics I sort of eventually thought yes this is what I wanted to do and then of course you got the the other big hurdle of actually getting into it but I, I sort of went off and did a, a course for a year a postgraduate course in Cornwall and uh, mm -hmm. effectively retrained and that in the end gave me the skills and the tools to actually get get my first job. So how did you actually get into the TV industry? Was that just luck or help from the university or just applying for jobs? Once I'd done, I did a, a year in Cornwall training as a radio journalist and, and at the end of that you're quite well equipped to actually get your first job in, in local radio. So I got a job in BBC local radio and worked there for about 18 months. Then once you're inside the BBC it's slightly easier to, to, to move around into all the different elements but again at that stage it wasn't going to be an easy mm -hmm. jump from radio to television so again at that stage I left that job I, I resigned from yeah. that job to do another training course totally a training course to do with uh, making you into a, a television reporter so as a radio reporter there was a sort of Roundtree Trust um, Foundation course together with BBC training that I then did that then gave me my first jobs in regional television and then into the, the national newsroom as a reporter for, for BBC News. So in a sense I sort of had two blasts of training, first to get me into to radio and then when I wanted to switch into television another year long course effectively to get me into television. Are there any particular courses that would benefit? Like you said that you've been on two training courses and do you think obviously that English is a prerequisite to the start of learning? It's not necessarily. I mean, when I talk to the various people I work with, people have come from all manner of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I was on my first training course, my radio training course, I remember the tutor endlessly trying to beat out of my system. I'd done a law degree and he used to always just hammer at me saying, you just, you just write and talk like a lawyer, you know. You've got to talk like an ordinary person. That's, that's how you broadcast. You're virtually... You try and remember that you're sort of sitting at a bar and trying to tell a story to somebody and that's how you'd speak. You don't mm -hmm. speak by using sort of legalese language or the sort of language a bank manager would write to you in. Yeah. And actually it had to be extracted out of me all of that stuff. So in a sense it doesn't really matter where you've come from um, as long as perhaps you're taught well in terms of what you need to, to actually deliver. And, that, and there are lots of different ways in. I mean, I, because I did a, a a full year's course, I sort of tend to give the advice to people to, that is a good way. There are a lot of courses around the country, Cardiff do one, uh, there's one in um, Cornwall where I went to in Falmouth, there's one in London, there are some in Lancashire. There are a lot about these days sort of journalism courses, year-long residential courses and um, I sort of still think that's a good way in because a lot of the big mm -hmm. companies, the BBC, ITV, they used to run very, very well-funded journalistic training courses. There are fewer of those now where people would select you and say, right, we'll train you from scratch. So in a sense, you have to make your own way. And I, I sort of think that is still a really good way because once you have a year's worth of, of training, you'll be surprised how marketable you are to get your first job 
in local radio like I did or local papers. Um, and so that's still a very productive avenue. I mean, there are other ways in. You can go straight to a newspaper and try and get uh, training there. They, they do do that. But um, mm -hmm. I, I think getting yourself almost skilled up so that you are able to be yeah. employable straight away, that makes you really instantly marketable. And, and once you've done that, it's pretty easy to get your first job. Where you go from that, then, you know, it's a huge pyramid that uh, is opened up in front of you with just a million avenues. But that sort of training, I always look back and think that was an absolutely critical, defining moment for me. Well, that's brilliant. I think that the university may be the way forward for me then. So thanks a lot for your time.